Hey everybody, I want to talk about how to choose the best CPU for your setup and some resources I've put together. Um, actually, not just me, but my whole team has put together on how to uh, just really pick what's best and what's best for your budget. Um, this is our new website. It's serverbuilds.net. And you can, you can see a lot of things here. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the website, but... Um, you can see the latest guide is on the front page, and if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the CPU comparison spreadsheet, which we're going to talk about in a few seconds, and then um, the $115 budget gaming build. Um, but really, the resources I'm talking about are going to be located in the resources tab at the top, and the first one is that CPU comparison spreadsheet that I was talking about. Um, so we've compared a lot of common Intel Xeons that are found on the, the refurb market and this will span socket 13 let's see 1366 2011 1 and uh, that includes V1 and V2 series E5 2600s as well as a couple E5 1600 which are still 2011 but they are single socket only um, so you can run them in dual socket boards, but you will never be able to pair them up with another. Um, or you could just run them in single socket config. And then also some consumer processors that are common all the way down from the i3-2120 or i5-2500 down through the 4000 series, 7000 series, 8000 series. Um, some AMD Ryzen chips, including the 2000 series. And uh, 2000 some ultra ridiculous and ultra low power stuff but really what you want to look for here is your socket first of all and they're grouped together by socket so all the 1366 are together all of the 2011 are together um, things like that and then we have the headers um, so you can view the max operating temp which honestly isn't that useful but it is something to note um, for example the L 5630s have a very low max operating temp, so you do need to keep them cool. Um, but in that in that example, they're only 40 watts of TDP, which is heat output measured in watts. That is not power usage. And if you have questions about TDP, um, please ask me here or in the Discord, and I will do my best to explain it to you. But just because it's measured in watts it does not mean it has anything to do with power output or power usage. This is heat output in watts. Um, but anyway, so this has a low max operating temp and also a low TDP, which means that it's not going to be too hard to keep it cool. Um, and then you can see the base frequency, which is 2.23 gigahertz. Turbo frequency, if it turbos. For example, the E5504 does not turbo, so it's the same. Um, uh, single core pass mark, which for most applications that we we do uh, where we run on servers, not going to be a big deal. Um, single core pass mark, you'll see big improvements in games mostly. Um, so just that's something to consider if you want to do any gaming. However, uh, I mean. I've run games on pretty much all of these Xeons, and unless they're particularly slow clock or particularly low single core, it's they run fine. So just take that for what you will. It depends on what kind of level you're gaming at. If you want to do competitive gaming and stuff, like I would definitely look towards a single like consumer chip, like an i7 or something like that. But if you're just doing casual gaming, like H HTPC couch gaming, not a big deal. Just run what you got and don't worry about it. Um, instructions per clock is not a spec that's um, offered by anyone. This is a relative uh, pass mark score based on the single core pass mark divided by the turbo frequency, or it's the other way around. I'm not sure, um, but it's it's a ratio of turbo frequency to single core pass mark because when you're running single core pass mark, it will be using the max turbo frequency. And 
really what you want to look at is you can see how these are all 0.4 ish within margin of error. And that's because they're running on the same process um, for that socket. And I think that was that socket's oh Jesus. Uh, I think it's Westmere. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it's Westmere. And this is Sandy Bridge. So you can see the, the relative instructions per clock, which is, um, you know, it's gone up. So it went from 0 0.41 and to the 0 0.5 range. Didn't really change much with 2600 V2. And you can see that some of the i7s and stuff like that are more efficient per, you know, per turbo speed. But that's even older, or not older, uh, even newer, more recent stuff. So this is kind of the same Sandy Bridge area right here. i5 2500 is 0.51. If you look at these, these are all Sandy Ridge. You can see they're all in the 0 0.5, 0 0.51, 0 0.53 range. So it's just something to consider. Uh, you would definitely like, you know, this is 3.86 turbo um, at 0 0.41. That's going to be less efficient than something that's 3.8 mm, at 0 0.49, of course. So it's just something to consider. Um, passmark, multi-core passmark, which is really important for, uh, for what we're doing and what most of you out there will be doing. Um, and that's, this is for single CPU config and then right next to it is dual CPU config. So you can see it's not really double. Um, some cases it's kind of close, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. I don't think that passmark is super optimized for dual CPU. Um, so you do lose a little bit. So for example, 6936 to 10348, that should be closer to 1400. Uh, but I don't think the test is super optimized. So it's just something to consider, uh, that there might be actually more power there than the pass mark score on the dual CPU would let on. And then we have pricing. And at the time that this was created, we pulled prices from eBay. And we try to find the lowest prices for single and dual. Sometimes the dual price was more expensive than a single. So what we, what we did was took the single price and multiplied it by two because, you know, you can buy two singles instead of just buying a, um, a quote matched pair. There's no such thing as matched pairs. So long as you match the processor code, like the SLBVD, uh, if you get two of those, then they'll work fine. Um, so that's the step in code. If you match those, then you don't have anything to worry about. You don't have to buy a matched pair. So sometimes it's cheaper to buy a single. So do that instead. Uh, and then pretty explanatory or self-explanatory, uh, pass mark per dollar. And this is for single CPU and dual CPU. And I didn't really talk about the colors yet. Red would be what is considered bad and green is what would be considered good. So it changes for every column but the columns, you know, the colors go all the way down up until this point and yellow would be the 50 percentile mark. So green, like this is the lowest TDP or very near the lowest TDP on the chart. So you can see it's green. And if you scroll down, I, don't, I think that is the lowest TDP. So that's, that's like ultimate green. That's as low, that's as green as it gets. And then, uh, I think yellow is probably about 90, 95. That's kind of the middle of the range. And then we've got some 180s with the Ryzen's, uh, the Ryzen Thread Rippers down here. So that's the highest TDP of any of the chips. And you can do that for pretty much every column. As you can see, like these don't have the dual CPU uh, pass mark because it can only run one CPU. Um, you can see the highest pass mark is around. 23,900, 23, and that's for dual CPU of E5, 2695V2, and that's 12, 12 cores, 24 threads. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a super useful chart, I think, and uh, I've gotten pretty good feedback from a lot of people on it. Um, I'm sorry I haven't talked about it here on YouTube yet, but it's been on Reddit and on the Discord for a little while. Um, 
it was super fun to put together and hopefully it'll be useful in the future. Um, so a couple things to note on this sheet as I close this out. Um, E5-2620 and E5-2640 are pretty much the best pass mark per dollar. And you can see that here reflected there very, very green in the price and the pass mark per dollar region. So consider those as a good starting point. And then if you need more power, go up from there. Um, if, if you're doing 1366, that is. Um, and then you can, you know, look at other things here, like the lowest price stuff or a good pass mark per dollar. But, they're not, you know, I would go like E5-2620 for 2011. Something like that. They're not too expensive, you know, $22 each or $35 for a pair. So if you want to check this out, just go to the resources tab, go to CPU comparison. And then if you want to maybe, let's see if we can view the full sheet. Um, go away, Edge. So the, when you're viewing a full sheet, it keeps the top tab here. So it's a little bit easier to compare processors and stuff like that. Jesus, Google. And it does the same thing on the left as well. And then one last thing, there's eBay links for each one. Oh my gosh, a lot of 54. That's insane. Um, so you can see like, you know, a lot of two E5504. So you can click on these on the left side and that'll take you to eBay searches for each one. And um, yeah, so hopefully this is helpful for you guys trying to pick a processor and one other resource that we have in the resources tab we'll, we'll definitely be adding more so um, just look for that in the future but we have my LGA 1366 deep dive test and these are tests that I actually performed on a standardized motherboard standardized setup the only things that I changed were the processors and you know, I kept the RAM the same, kept the power supply the same, uh, all the devices plugged in the same. I used two different video cards. I used a 1050 Ti and a GTX 980, which is quite a bit more power hungry and more powerful than the 1050 Ti. Um, but I also did some CPU only testing. Up here we have the, you know, going across we have different models, but we have the cost, cores, threads, um, you know, bus speed, things like that. Just stats about your, uh, your CPU or whichever CPU we're testing. Um, and then as you go down, the blue section is with, or that's the, um, CPU benchmarks with a 1050 Ti installed. Although we weren't doing anything with the 1050 Ti, that's just for booting and displaying out. Um, but you can see the pass mark per dollar, pass mark um, per watt. So we actually did power testing and Ida 64 is a 100% synthetic CPU load. So you can see that dual E5620 under hundred percent synthetic load is about 244 Watts with the 1050 Ti. I would say that the, the 1050 Ti is about 15 Watts idle. So maybe a little bit less than that. So probably around 229, 230 Watts. Um, and then you can see the the peak temp that was achieved with that. Um, let's see, yeah, I mean, even dual F X5670 under full synthetic load is only 335 watts, and most people will not be getting to 100% load at you know 24/7. So that's that's really unrealistic. And uh, you can also look for, okay, here's idle power consumption. And you can see that there's not a whole lot of difference in idle power consumption between the different processors. So here's why I have an issue with people using TDP as a power consumption metric. It, it doesn't reflect well because here's, here's a dual E5506. 160 watts TDP combined. So that's 127 watts at idle. That's not the same number. They're not even close. And on top of that, I'm running a hard drive, a solid state, fans. Uh, there's power supply overhead. And I also have a video card. Uh, and then at 
maximum that's 266 watts that's a huge discrepancy so really the tdp doesn't matter in regards to power consumption but also if you look at these two processors they're both 190 watt tdp and you can see that there's a huge change there's 341 max versus 374 max uh max power consumption that's you know that's a huge change for them being the same tdp uh so it's just something to consider that tdp is just really useful for how much heat that your processors will put out typically a higher tdp processor will also use more power but it does not mean that it will use that much power that you know that number uh, so, you know, the X5670 will not use 95 watts of power. You can see it's 146 watts idle or, you know, for two of them. So it could be even less than that. So it's just something to consider. Um, and I did a bunch of different benchmarks, uh, based on, you know, graphics score and see if there, if, if there's like a GPU bottleneck or a CPU bottleneck. So we have two different sets of data here one for the 1050 1050 ti graphics which is in green and the gtx 980 graphics in yellow and unfortunately at the time i didn't have any other higher end cards like a 1070 or 1080 1080 ti um, but that's what i had available and i don't know if i'm going to be able to do deep dive testing like this in the future this took me about three days of solid work to get all these tests done uh, i ran each test multiple times to to verify numbers and whatnot. So um, it, it was a lot of work, but I think that this sheet should be useful to some of you, uh, maybe a little bit less so than the last one. But again, you can, you can view the full external link by just clicking here. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say with this video. If you have any questions, give me a shout out in the comments. Um, links to this website will be in the description of this video. And if you have any other questions, uh, hit me up on Discord or on Reddit, and I'll do my best to get back to you. I'm sorry this was a long, rambling video, but, uh, you know, had to drink my morning coffee and and uh, get something done this morning. So hopefully, hopefully you guys find this use, useful, and uh, yeah, uh, look for the next guide coming out on August 20th, and I'll see you then.